is up everybody today I will be talking about in my opinion the top 40 best WWF WWE in all time of the World Wrestling Federation's time best theme songs of all time in my opinion I'm gonna be missing a lot of good ones because I only came up with 40 but I came up with more, but I had to cut that shit down because it would be in like a top 100 or a top 120 and or 200, and I cannot go all day long. So a bunch of stuff is going to be missed out, just to let you know. And also for you guys who want to know, might as well clear the room if you're wondering about it because you're going to be writing in the comments anyway, like what's up with your fucking head. I was scratching my head a couple of days ago to the point where it bled. It was me being an idiot, so now I gotta wait until it clears up. So I look like a Middle Eastern. That doesn't sound racist whatsoever, does it? I'm gonna piss off a lot of Middle Eastern now. It's like, I'm gonna go get a job at 7 Eleven. I'm digging myself into a hole even more. <laughs> Sorry. But anyway, let's start with the top 40 WWE thing, theme songs, in my opinion. Let's get started with number 40. Number 40 would be Demolition's theme song from back in the day. Who cannot get out of their seats when they hear this song coming out? Oh, by the way, I'm gonna be, this is going to be unedited, so I'll be all over the place with this shit. I'll provide the links to you below of the theme songs that I'm talking about, so you can know what the hell I'm talking about, and you can view it for yourselves. So anyways... Demolition. As soon as you hear this words like dun 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 here comes the axe, here comes the smasher, the demolition, walking disaster. You know the rest of the song. It does not get you pumped out of your seats. I don't know, nothing will. It's like, I love that theme song. It's old school. And speaking of old school, let's go with number 39. Big Boss Man's theme song. Which theme song? The Hard Time theme song when he was doing the whole uh, prison guard gimmick before the black shit prison guard. When he actually had prison uniform. When he was tag teaming with Akeem or One Man Gang. The Twin Towers. You know what I'm talking about, that Hard Time song. It's amazing, you gotta admit it. 38 is a theme song from the Attitude Era, and it, it's considered from a stable of freaks named The Oddities, sung by the Insane Clown Posse. Tell me you didn't love this song when you were in the Attitude Era. The wrestlers themselves, or should I call them wrestlers? Well, Golga was Earthquake, so I think he's the only one that could work. Was it, was not the, George Animal Steel was in there once. Yeah, he could work too. But yeah, them coming out to his insane clown posse, like pumping the shit out of it, the audience. What can go, no, that's just awesome, don't you think? 37. Some of you may be too young to remember this guy. Draws, Darren Draws Doff. He's now in a wheelchair because he got paralyzed from a wrong move done by D'Lo Brown, which he feels sorry for to this day. His first theme song, when you hear the sticks banging together, gets you pumped up. And I'm sure it has hell pumped me up. Even though Draws was mediocre, he could have been something today. Who knows what he could have done before he got paralyzed from the waist down. Or from the neck up, I forget which. But I, again, his theme song was pretty amazing. Number 36, Steve Blackman, the Lethal Weapon. Before he joined Head Cheese and before he had that other theme song, I'm talking about his first theme song that, it's hard to explain. Just watch the uh, video, I shall provide the link. And you can see why it's an amazing theme song. Cause like, you can never tell when who he would come out and as soon as that music hit, you know shit was about to go down.
Number 35. This man has passed away, just like Big Boss Man. This is Test, we're talking about, Andrew Martin. Not the theme song he used when he was in the corporation days, but after that. Test, this is a test with the rap in it, with the rapping. Like I said, I shall provide the link to you below to, to show you what I'm talking about. And let's not, I've got to say right now, I'm a huge test mark. I love that guy back in the day. Anytime he would come out, I'd be so pumped, especially when, I hear, when I hear his music. Rest in peace, Test. Oh yeah, and rest in peace, Boss Man. Number 34, Cactus Jack's theme song. As soon as you hear the Cactus Jack theme song, shit is about to go down and you know someone's getting hurt. And Mick Foley's gonna go all out. 33, Jake the Snake Roberts. I think he didn't get his theme song until he came back for a second time during like the 90s. Because I'm pretty sure during the 80s he had no theme song, but when he came back in the second time, when he was like sort of chubby and still uh, looking horrible, he had this amazing theme song that got into your head because it was very slow and silent, just like him. Gets into your head. Basically, that's what it is. 32, The Money Man, Ted DiBiase, the infamous laugh, his theme song. As soon as you hear the laugh and the rest of the music, it's an all-out awesome go right there, especially when he has his million-dollar corporation coming out. It's Ted DiBiase. What else can you say? Number 31. I got my blue suede shoes and my hair slicked back. I, goo I can't remember the rest of the words. Go to uh, I'm a honky tonk man. He's a honky tonk. Yeah, it's the honky tonk man. I kind of fucked that joke up. But yeah, come on. You know you love that song too when he came out. He may not have wrestled any great. I can't speak today. He might not have wrestled well, but his theme song was a definite pop. Number thirty. Some may be thinking, what the fuck's wrong with me when I pick this one? But I'm just letting you know, it's not the wrestler, it's the theme song that got me pumped. The Blue Meanie. Yes, I said it, the Blue Meanie. The first time he joined the WWE when he was in the job squad. Remember that, guys? He had that song that you could just groove to. It was weird as fuck because you kept on doing this. But come on, it's an amazing song. And the next guy, 29, you may be wondering what the fuck, why would, is he below the Blue Meanie, would be Dusty Rhodes American Dream theme song with the polka dots. The gimmick itself was not that great, but the song itself was just amazing. Come on. You all sang it when he came out. Don't lie. Number 28. Brodus Clay was not the first one to use this thing. Ernest the Cat Miller used this when he was in the WWE for a cup of coffee. Shitty wrestler. Awesome song. Easy to get down to. Gets you pumped up. So either Ernest the Cat Miller or Rose Clay, whenever you hear that song, it's awesome to hear, but not the wrestler himself. Although Rose Clay kind of got fucked over with that gimmick. 27. I'm going to have to put this guy very, very low because I just want to get rid of him off the bat because I don't want him to be in the top 10 because come on. It's Hulk Hogan's I Am A Real American. Let's just get this out the way. Let's hear it. Why not put Hulk Hogan right now? Because I just want to get it over with. 
so I don't have to deal with the bullshit of him being in the top 10. That's it. That's all I have to say. It's my list, so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> and 26. Considering I have Hulk Hogan at 27, and 26 would be a joke for a wrestler if they were went head to head. But I'm talking about entrance themes here, and that's the Repo Man. Smash of Demolition, when he was called the Repo Man. Don't, you know his music was amazing too. Repo Man and the rest of his music. Come on, you know you liked it. Number 25, Tatankas. Back when he can actually wrestle. When you were hear the Indian voices going off, that didn't sound racist whatsoever. I don't know how to say this without sounding racist. Whenever he went, Whoa! I'm gonna shut up now. His theme song was badass, is all I gotta say. Number 24, The Godfather, get on the whole train. Come on, it's a good theme song. It got you pumped up. Anytime you hear him, you know you're gonna have fun watching him. It is the best entrance in quite a while. Number 23, any combination of the Heart Foundation when they come out to this song. It could be either Owen Hart or Bret Hart when they come out as a team. Brian Pillman, Bridget Bulldog, any one of these guys. Jim Neidhart. You know when as soon as you hear the Heart Foundation music, shit's about to go down. The original Heart Foundation music. Not the, Heart Fo not the Bret Hart, Hitman Hart music that is now that is remixed. Screw that one. Or the Tyson Kidd one, which is kind of a remix more version of it. Talking about the original one. 22. This guy, all his theme songs are amazing. But I have to pick one. I can't just pick one. So I'm going to have to go with his first theme song when he entered the WWE. Not the Radicals theme song. I'm talking about his single theme song. It's the Latino Heat theme song by Eddie Guerrero. And, yeah, that's what I got to say. Eddie Guerrero's Latino Heat theme song was awesome. In every one of his other theme songs. But Latino Heat will always have a place in my heart, his theme song. Next. Number 21, Rey Mysterio's first theme song when he came to the WWE. Hey, who's that up in the sky? Rey Mysterio, here we go. That one, not the Booyaka's one, but the Booyaka one was really good too. But I have a soft spot for the first one. And is anyone else glad that he finally got released from the WWE? Because he should have been released like four years ago. That guy's injury prone. I swear, every time he comes back, he gets injured, comes back, to injured again. He's no longer in his prime, but anyways, I'm going off in a rant right here. Number 20. A shitty-ass wrestler, but has the best theme song I ever heard. Or maybe that's just me, because I like rap music. So Rodney Max, the Mac Militant, coming to get it all. And then Fiddler Long stole it after. I mean, it is own. That's all I gotta say. Number 19 would be the Hardy Boys, their second theme song. When they were not generic jobbers, when they were not wearing suspenders, yes, you know what I'm talking about. Those who do, congratulations. You remember when they were first the generic jobber guys on Raw. <laughs> But I'm talking about when they were like put into the brood, then left the brood, and they started their feud with the Edge and Christian and the Dully Boys, and they had that kick ass theme song to come out to. And you'd be rocking like this. I can't do it. But you know what I'm talking about. And like I said, I'll provide the link to you below. Number 20. 
Number 18, the one, two, three kid. Yes, I said it. Just listen to his theme song. It got me pumped, even though he was an generic jobber. He still had a cool theme song. Number 17, it's time. It's time. It's Veda time. When you got the audience singing your theme song, you know it's an amazing song. And it's Vader too. Too bad he got jobbed out in the WWE. 16. Hardcore Holly. Before, not before where he, okay. Let's start over. Hardcore Holly. The theme song he used when he first broke out of the job squad won the hardcore title and became a hardcore badass. Before he joined Crash and became the Holly Cousins and started his own thing. That theme song in between was amazing. Then they changed it up a bit after a while, but I gotta say that theme song in between before and before all that shit happened, right after the job squad, that time era was amazing. And number 15, the Disciples of Apocalypse, otherwise known as DOA, which had Skull, 8-Ball, Chains, and Brian Lee. The Biker Gang. Shitty wrestlers. Well, maybe Brian Lee and Brian Crush Adams were good, but not that great. But their theme song was amazing. Like I said, I'm only judging based on the theme song. And speaking of judging on the theme song, remember that when I say the next theme song to the next number. <laughs> number 14. I'm going to say it anyway. Too much. For those of you who are, who are too young to know what the hell I'm talking about, too much is now known as too cool. Grandmaster Sexy and Scotty Duhati. Before it became too cool, they were the gay tag team known as Too Much. They actually played a gay tag team, but they never said they were gay. Their theme song, on the other hand, was pretty badass. It seemed like one of those theme songs where you can put in a Beverly Hills Cop movie or any Eddie Murphy movie. I think I swore to God, I think I did hear one of these theme, one of these. Theme, one of the theme songs in an Eddie Murphy movie. I just can't remember which one. Or they could put in like a John Claude Van Damme movie. Like, or any early 90s or late 80s action movie. It just got you pumped a bit. Not a bit, a lot is what I gotta say. Now the next one was the ultimate badass. Ministry of Darkness. Holy shit, that theme song was amazing, is all I gotta say. Watch the link and you'll have to remember, you'll remember what the hell you were thinking of when you were first seeing this. Number 12, the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. As soon as you heard the music, the first note to this song, you know shit's about to go down. Cause Ken Shamrock, cause Ken Shamrock is about to kill your ass, kick your ass. Seriously, I can't speak. Water break. Number 11. The Nexus. No words can be said about this. It's just the Nexus. Their song, theme song is amazing. Next. Number 10. Sexy Boy Shawn Michaels. Um, the song plays itself, man. What else can I say? There's nothing bad about this thing. Except for like the first version where Sherry Martell sang the first three notes, which kind of sucked, but then later on they changed it to Shawn Michaels doing it. That was better, in my opinion. I don't know, which one did you like? Sherry Martell's version or Shawn Michaels' version? Number nine, this guy didn't go anywhere in the WWE. He was supposed to be the chosen one, but he got crapped on. And then got put in the three-man band later on. But before the three-man band, he was Drew McIntyre. Like I said, I'll provide the link to you below so you can hear it. 
Number eight, Edge. On this day, I see clearly. That theme song, holy crap, is way better than Rob the Zombie's theme song. Or the Think You Know Me one. The generic one. God dang, that was awesome is all I gotta say. Number seven, I'm kind of cheating on this one, but it was on a WWE event. Let me explain. The first ECW One Night Stand, which was supposed to be ECWs and all that stuff, but WWE guys showed up, so it was technically still a WWE show. So it still counts, technically. Sandman, enter the Sandman. Come on, Metallica, how can you go wrong? Like I said, it's a sort of a cheat, but it was on a WWE show under an ECW name. It still counts. Number six, The Brew, any version of it, was Edge and Christian, or The Hardy Boys, or Gangrel by himself. Vampire music, dude, come on. How can you go wrong with The Brew? Number five, D Generation X. No, not Triple H and Shawn Michaels of today. I'm talking about the original era of the Attitude when X-Pac the New Age Outlaws, Triple H, and Shawn Michaels was there for a short time. That era, that was the amazing one where the music, God damn, whenever that song came out, people just lost their shit. Now people don't lose their shit that much because like it's like 40 year olds pretending to be degenerates. They're close to 50 now. It's like, how can he be a degenerate at age 50? Okay. Number four, CM Punk's cult of personality. I gotta say one thing though. I cannot listen to this song anymore outside in the public without people just looking at me saying, oh, you're a WWE more because you like that song. Fuck you guy. I would listen to this song way before CM Punk uses it. That's the only negative thing I can think of it about it. But the cult of personality for CM Punk's music Top A, grade A, I can't, I, damn, just damn. Number three, The Rock. Not the original Rock stuff, like the generic stuff, like you smell what The Rock is cooking, like that stuff. I'm talking about when he became like the gimmick of like a Hollywood actor. And it took like a minute, almost a minute for his entrance theme song to kick in. And it finally goes like, it's cooking. And it goes like, doom, 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 doom. I shall, like I said, the link will be below so you can see which version I am talking about. That version I like the most. The other versions was just okay, but the most that mostly grabbed me out of the seat was that version. Number two. Bray Wyatt. How can you go wrong with dozens of people in the crowd just waving their cell phones around like a camp, waving their cell phones around to that new song and it's dark. It's freaking amazing. God, wow, just wow. And number one, of course we all know who it is, but I gotta say, before I say it, I missed out a lot like Triple H, Chris Jericho, Macho Man, Ric Flair, Mr. Perfect, but like I said, I missed out a lot, and it would have been a top whatever list, but I think I can make another list for another day. But anyway, on to number one, we all know who it is, Stone Cold Steve Austin. As soon as you heard the glass shatter, shit's about to go down because a bad motherfucker was about to come out and just kick your ass. But anyways, what are your guys' opinions on the best theme songs? Take it easy, Human Nation, humanoid freak out, bye.